guys welcome back to days of darkness and welcome back to the friday the 13th franchise today we're going to be talking about part three which came out in 1982 and is starring dana kimmel tracy savage and richard brooker as jason and was directed by steve minor now for me uh this is a very very solid entry into the franchise uh not my favorite by any means but i i really think that this well, first of all, we gotta acknowledge the fact that this was the first film to have the iconic hockey mask. Uh, it's funny to think about, like, because as I'm going along with these reviews, I'm also watching the uh, Crystal Lake Memories uh, documentary. You can actually watch it on Shudder right now. I'm not sponsored sponsored by Shudder or anything like that. <laughs> That'd be cool if I was. But uh, but no, and it's interesting because they talk about how the mask, the hockey mask, was essentially just a fluke. And uh, it's just very interesting to me of what if they didn't go with that? What if they went with something else, like a clown mask or just something goofy and stupid? Like, would we have just, would the Friday the 13th franchise just be done? Because after three, they're, they were going to be, it was going to be over. That was going to be it. Uh, Jason was going to be dead and that's that. But uh, obviously looking back, uh, that is not the case, and thank God they went with the hockey mask, but not only that, I just think this is a very, very fun slasher. You get some very fun, memorable characters, and obviously what we're all here for, you get some really, really good kills, which obviously I will talk about that later on in the video, but, uh, and yeah, the only real big negative, I mean, this isn't a perfect film, you know, you have your hammy performances, you have some shoddy special effects uh not but nothing offensively bad nothing i would avoid watching the movie for <laughs> or anything like that uh the only thing that is honestly extremely annoying about this is the 3d aspect of this film uh once released they uh they they wanted it to be 3d uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't really tell you why, but uh, for some reason they just had the bright idea to make it 3D, which led to all sorts of production issues and all that shit. So not only it does it not translate that well, but it was a bitch to make. I mean, the 3D works. It's like I've I've watched this movie in 3D before. It was with the shitty little, you know, cardboard 3D glasses, and it all works just fine. But to me. It just takes away from the film a little bit. Uh, nothing, again, to where I wouldn't watch this. Obviously, I very much so recommend this. But um, <laughs> there's literally just stuff that is put into this film purely uh, for the 3D aspect. And to me, it just it's distracting. It doesn't. It's just corny. It doesn't work. And I'm usually one to look past those sort of things, especially for a franchise like this that I love so dearly. But, uh, yeah, there's just something about the 3D shit in this movie that I do not like at all and uh, has not aged well. And, quite frankly, I don't think it was really that impressive for the time either because you had a lot of stuff coming out then that was, uh, you know. To me, the 3D, I'm rambling a lot. I just don't like 3D is essentially what I'm getting at. I've never liked it. It's never impressed me. I just, I'm not one of those people who go to a theater and put on a fucking gimmick and just, woo, like it just doesn't. Doesn't do anything for me. Uh, it sounded like I'm shitting on this movie. I'm not. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of the reasons why I love this so much in the spoiler section. But, uh, yeah. Fuck 3D movies. And let's spoil the shit out of this thing. On to the spoiler section. Alright. Spoiler time. Your ass has been warned. Now let's get into it. So... Right off the bat, a big positive for me and something that I really like is that this picks up right after two like boom straight after two very cool stuff uh, i always like when movies do that uh the original halloween 2 does that and i really like that and uh actually they take this uh they take this idea and they apply it to four as well because uh part four takes place right after part three but we'll obviously get in get into that in two weeks when we talk about part four but anyways uh, i really like that and also what it does pretty effectively with this opening uh in my opinion uh is they they clean up a lot of the muddiness left in part two and they also 
it also explains away a lot of the continuity stuff that I think people have a problem with, at least some of it, because <laughs> there obviously is parts of this series that, uh, yeah. But anyways, um, mainly being the fact that Jason is now bald, because in the previous one he did have hair. Uh, they explain that pretty effectively with that just being a dream. Uh, they explain that... Uh, Jenny from part two was the only one found so to me or she's the lone survivor I think they say so in my mind that means that Paul is dead and I'm sticking to that I think Paul is uh, dead and gone unfortunately and uh, there's also some other stuff that I've heard people was like why the fuck okay if this takes right takes place right after part two why does he have new clothes and it's pretty self-explanatory the very first time you actually see jason up and walking around besides him like grabbing the machete and shit uh is when he like the very first time you see him walking around is uh in the in the area where the the couple who owns that little department store she's cleaning the dude's clothes and um so it's like you all these clothes are hanging up and I would assume he just put some shit on from, put some of that guy's clothes on, because he's a very similar build as uh, uh, Mr. Richard Brooker is, so it makes sense to me, but uh, anyways, uh, I'm a big continuity guy, I want stuff to make sense, and I've begrudgingly accepted that uh, some of the stuff in this series just doesn't make a whole, whole lot of sense, but uh but yeah, anyways, I'm going to try not to uh, <laughs> focus on that for too long. Let's get into some of the characters of this movie. I really, really like... Uh, this is where they really started to introduce some really cool, fun characters. Uh, 82, you start... You know, now we're like really getting into like more of an 80s vibe kind of thing. And I really enjoy it. Uh, so you have... Uh, let's just talk about the bikers. I really, <laughs> I think the bikers are so much fun, especially the, uh, the, uh, the main chick, the, the cool, you know, her name is Fox, I believe. And, uh, she is definitely, <laughs> she's, she's fun. Uh, I really like her little, um, I really like her banter in the, uh, the gas station. Where uh, Shelly and his uh, date, who I cannot remember her name. I need to start probably <laughs> writing down characters' names. But hey, sue me. Uh, anyways, but when they're in the gas station and she picks up Shelly's wallet. And she, uh, she's like, can I have that back please? And Fox is like, "You." <laughs> I can't even remember it verbatim. But she's like, she's like, where I come from, you ask nice. And it just keeps going, and she's finally, she's like, can I have the wallet, please? <laughs> it's so cheesy, but it's so much fun. She goes, yeah, that's good. That's real nice. <laughs> I don't know why it sticks out to me, and it's so fucking funny. But uh, I really like the bikers in this. They, uh, Shelly actually goes on to run over all of their bikes with uh, uh, Rick's car. And uh, you just get a you just get a lot of fun interactions between the kids and the bikers in this, and it's just cool shit. And also, all their deaths are really cool. Um, uh, Fox getting hung with a pitchfork in her neck, and the uh, the other guy getting a pitchfork in the stomach. Uh, Jason just has a thing for pitchforks in this one, I guess, a little bit. Uh, but really, he's pretty pretty uh, widespread with the. Uh, different farm and kitchen appliances he uses in this one but uh <laughs> but anyways and then the third uh, biker gets it uh, later on in the end tough motherfucker too that guy like jason beats the shit out of him you'd think he beats him dead but uh he pops up later in the film literally does not get any offense in and jason just hacks his arm off and make sure he, he hacks this dude to fucking pieces. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't see any of it, but he's he's dead <laughs> by the end of this. But uh, the bikers are really cool. Uh, I love Shelly. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm a little conflicted on Shelly because part of, you know he's a fat kid and he's the he's a prankster and uh, he's like the reject and you 
you want to feel bad for him, but there's just shit that he does in this movie where it's like, dude, <laughs> like, come on, man. Now, you know, I've, I've known people like that in life where it's like, they're trying so hard and they're just, they're making it worse. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Shelly's cool and everything, but fuck, he is annoying. But you can't hit him too much because he is actually the reason, uh, Jason, you know, canonically, he is the reason Jason gets his hockey mask and why he dones that uh, that look for uh, eight, seven or eight more movies. Well, seven. This is his look from now on. <laughs> and it's because of Shelly. So thank you, Shelly. Uh, I'm sorry you had to get your throat cut. Uh, throat cut? Ooh, no, not that. Throat cut <laughs> because of this. But, uh, but yeah, man. Thank you. Anyways. And then you have uh, Chris who is um, a pretty cool final girl. No, not my favorite by any means, but she serves her purpose. She's a strong, capable woman who has been dealing with some uh, some trauma uh, at the hands of Jason, actually. Uh, this, it's interesting to me. It's probably the, the muddiest part of this film for me, and it's that she, uh, she talks to Rick, who is her love interest, we'll, which we'll get into Rick. Uh, but she talks to Rick about how she was at the lake at some point uh, with her family and how Jason essentially just chased her and she passed out. And it's weird. Um, there are some people who thinks he there are some people who think he just sexually assaulted her or something like that. I don't really subscribe to that. It's just it doesn't seem. It seems like his mom was like very, very, very against any sort of sexual shit at all. It's the whole reason Jason died in the first place. So I just don't think it would really uh, fit his mo. But then that leads to the the question of well, what the what the fuck happened? Did he just beat the shit out of her and she passed out and he left? Doesn't really seem like a Jason thing. And, you know, they're still kind of getting their footwork as far as the uh, the Jason character is concerned. So they might have had some sort of intention to a more go, in, go more in depth on that part of him. And they just, you know, in future films, they just didn't. Uh, but it's definitely weird. It's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a negative per se, but it is distracting. Uh, it's not a real slide on the character though of Chris. I think Chris is a very, very fun, cool final girl. And uh, by the end of this film, she ends up going crazy. <laughs> she kind of loses it a little bit by the end of this one. And we never see her again, so she might just still be in a Louis bin. Who knows? Uh, some of the negative characters I don't, I don't really like in this movie too much. One of them being Rick. Uh, I just, I think... That character is very, first of all, the performance by the gentleman who played Rick, which I do not have the actor's name down, but uh, it just doesn't work for me. Very wooden, very, very Kendall acting, just very like, you know, I mean, he's supposed to be, I mean, the dude's in great shape and he's a good looking dude and everything. There's no problem with that. It's just he's... I think they rely on that a little too much and he just doesn't I just don't there's nothing interesting about him he's just trying to get in Chris's pants the whole time and it's like he, he's very forceful and very aggressive uh, and you're supposed to like this character like this like, if he was a douchebag fine whatever I wouldn't have a problem with the character but he's betrayed as like this almost heroic kind of guy uh, at least on the surface and you're just like eh, he's being very very uh, sexually aggressive to someone who has known trauma uh, again possibly a sexual assault but who fucking knows uh, but and really she doesn't even know but uh, nonetheless she is noticeably resistant and he just keeps trying to get in her pants and it's like dude chill the fuck out but uh but anyways like I said if he was just some villainous guy I wouldn't have a problem with it. The content doesn't offend me or anything like that. I mean, I, I like people getting their heads cut in half, so that's not an issue for me. It's more so of the fact that this guy is a protagonist, and it's like he just doesn't seem like that at all. 
but uh, that's the real only character I can't really get behind. Uh, other than that, we have a poor man's Ralph in this. Uh, anyone who knows, especially now if you've been watching the uh, reviews so far, I'm a big Ralph guy. I love Crazy Ralph. Uh, <laughs> and obviously he got killed off in part two, so they just have some other, you know, weird homeless guy who has a fucking eyeball for some reason. And he's talking about, like, this was given to me. And he, like, again, another stupid 3D thing. He, like, just to show you how obnoxious it is, he's, like, doing that. Like, ooh. You know, and fucking, <laughs> it's just stupid. Uh, you know, not nothing, uh, not insulting the actor or anything. He did his job. He did fine, but it's not Ralph, man. I want Ralph back, even if it's a zombie Ralph. Maybe that could be the next movie if they ever uh, get the licensing shit all squared away with the Friday the Thirteenth stuff. Have a zombie zombie Ralph come back and uh, fight Jason. This is why I'm not making movies. <laughs> But anyways, um, and yeah, really that's it. Oh, yeah, uh, one of the women is uh, pregnant in this film, which I thought was a little shoehorned in there. I think, you know, it was just a little throwaway line of dialogue. Like, <laughs> she, uh, there's just a comment about her having to go to the bathroom every three minutes. She's like, well, well, that's what happens when you're pregnant. And, like, that's how we find out. And then, like, two minutes later, she's like, no, we, I, I can't do, I think she's, like, offered pot. And she's like, I can't do that. We're pregnant, remember? And it's like, okay, we get it. You're pregnant. Got it. <laughs> it's just seeing, and then it's never acknowledged for the rest of the movie. Unless I just missed something. I mean, I've watched this more times than I'd like to admit. But it's just those two lines, and then it's just not acknowledged anymore. <laughs> so it's like... You know, there was a good opportunity to do some interesting, cool shit with that, but they just didn't, and they killed her off, and that was it. But yeah, let's just talk about Jason for a second. Uh, and this one, played by Richard Brooker, as I previously mentioned, uh, brings a really, really solid uh, physical uh, performance to Jason. It introduces a lot of phys bleh, physicality to the character, fitting because Richard Brooker was a... Uh, a circus performer and uh so he had a lot of athletic background before getting this role and man it shows like some of the stuff he does uh, uh, as far as just um mainly the thing that sticks out to me is just his he's very agile obviously he's not flipping around like yoda and yoda and attack of the clones or anything like that but uh he's just very you know he's very quick and he's uh Mainly the thing I'm thinking about is when he, at the end, when he uh, takes himself off off that noose and just kind of jumps down. It's a very simple thing, but, I mean, the height from the height he came down, uh, there are some dudes I know who, like, they'd be done for the day. <laughs> so, uh, but overall, though, I think he just brings a really cool, and a role where you have to be silent, I think Richard Brooker uh, was, in a, was a fantastic Jason. It's a shame this is the only one he did. Uh, unfortunately, we did lose uh, Richard Brooker in 2013, uh, which is a shame because anytime I ever hear anything about him in any of the interviews, because I watch constant, I constantly watch uh, like just special feature documentaries. It's a big thing for me, and anytime I see, I hear any actor from this film talk about Richard, yeah, they all they always only have good things to say. Just General Giant and an Angel and. All that sort of stuff. So rest, rest in uh, peace, Mr. Brooker. And uh, thank you for giving us an incredible Jason. But anyways, as far as the character is concerned, uh, we get a lot of hints to him being very superhuman in this. There are... Uh, in, the, in the second and part two, uh, you really don't get any sense that this guy is superhuman or invincible besides the fact of him being alive after what happened to him in part two but, but uh you really don't get any sense of him being invincible or unstoppable or anything like that in this one they kind of throw that shit out the window especially at the end which we will uh, incorporate that into the end here uh jason uh, everyone else is dead by this point as expected <clears throat> and uh chris is running over to the barn uh, and she leads Jason there, and she basically, you know, goes up into the attic. She is able to, you know, 
bada bing bada boom i'm not gonna just run down the whole scene for you she ends up hanging jason she you know puts him she knocks him out knocks him out cold uh puts a noose around his neck and just hangs him he she shoves him out the barn window and he literally is hung and so you're like as any normal human being would you'd be fucking dead after that <laughs> pretty decisively but uh <clears throat> i take a little sip here <clears throat> but yeah uh he is not and he uh springs back to life uh, you actually get to see his face which is very uh gross looking as would be expected but uh but yeah and you get this cool reaction from chris because she then recognizes him as the man who uh you know uh basically stalked her all those years ago and so she's obviously <laughs> has a lot more motivation to uh kill this fucking guy uh, and plants an axe right in his fucking head uh you actually before that you get a uh the, like i said before the uh the last biker kind of springs back to life because uh, he i guess jason just didn't kill him and uh and he gets hacked apart and you know once jason turns around she just plants an axe right in his head and you think okay that's it and then he's just like kind of staggered and then he's still coming and you're like fuck what the hell <laughs> And even Chris is like, what, the, what? And I think that's what kind of leads her to just go completely insane. It's like, I literally killed this dude twice. Uh, but he does end up succumbing to that head wound. Uh, it takes him a while, but he does, you know, slump over and he dies. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> just a really cool, really cool ending there. Um, uh, Chris ends up uh, going over to the... Um, uh, she ends up getting a boat and uh, goes out into the middle of the lake, which I have to talk about the boat real quick. Uh, I mean, not the boat, the lake. It's pretty obvious in this that the location they were at, the lake, is just a pond or a small body of water. There's really no wide shot. And just how it's, as someone who has been around places like that, it just looks like it's just a very small body of water not nothing to you know shake your nose at or anything but uh it does not give off the appearance of a lake but it does its job in this movie so i'm not bitching or anything it's just a little thing i noticed in this one but yeah she uh goes out into the middle of this lake and uh at some point she falls asleep because this is obviously a dream sequence and she actually sees jason with the axe wound in his head you know bleeding all over the place and he comes out to chase her and she just just closes her eyes and then all of a sudden he's gone and she's like well what the shit and then we get zombie pamela that uh comes up just to give a little homage to part one it's now pamela uh in zombie form jumping out of the water and coming and grabbing uh chris which Again, it wouldn't have made as much sense as the first one, but it would have been cool. Like, if this was going to be the last Friday like they were uh, planning, would have been cool to have uh, <laughs> Zombie Pamela and Zombie Jason just kind of reunited. Happy ending for them, not so much for uh, Chris. But, you know, you do get a little more after that. It's where you see Chris basically just going fucking crazy and uh, kind of losing her marbles, and uh, that's it. You really don't get any strong hint that jason is alive uh the only real thing you get is you get a one last uh one last shot of the lake and you just see like a little ripple in the lake and you're like mm, that was a little weird and sure enough i guess they kind of wanted to leave a little open-endedness just in case and uh it paid off because we have uh seven more movies to talk about so <laughs> they, it did its job but yeah, that'll do it for um, part three. Uh, we're not done, though. Uh, the review portion is done, but we got to talk about the blood, the gore, the good stuff. Let's talk about our kill of the film. In all honesty, it probably wouldn't be good for me to wear this for the whole uh, section of this review. I just thought it'd be fun. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I had to get that in there somewhere. Anyways, um, so 
Uh, Friday the 13th, part three, definitely has some really, really cool gore, uh, really cool effects. Um, a lot of them do utilize, well, some of them do utilize that 3D aspect, which takes away a little bit. Uh, thankfully, with one of the kills that I'll get into here, uh, it doesn't, it's not like horrible, uh, mainly. The very first time you see uh, Jason with the mask in this movie, which is actually later in the film because he gets it from Shelly a little little later on uh, in the movie. Uh, but he, the first time you see him, he's walking out onto a dock with a harpoon gun. And one of the chicks is out there looking for Shelly's wallet because she dropped it in the lake and she thinks it's Shelly because she's seen him wear the mask. So she's like, hey, I got your, uh, I got your wallet. It fell in the lake. And you just see them slowly with one hand too. And like I've seen harpoon guns. Those are fucking, you, know, you got to do this. But he just holds it with one arm. And uh, she's like, what are you doing? Which is like at that point, you know, you might want to duck lady. But she doesn't. And she gets a harpoon right in the fucking eye. You, you know, the obviously with the 3D, the, the uh, harpoon just goes right into the camera. Uh, it's not nearly like the worst looking effect uh, as far as like the actual process of it, you know, darting into the camera, uh, nothing bad there. It's probably the least distracting of all the 3D moments, but, uh, seeing it, you know, just fuck right in her fucking eye. That part's great. Love that. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Uh, Shelly's kill, it is an off-screen kill, but it's very fitting for his character because he's like, at one point, he's like joking that he has a head in his, uh, had a, bleh, I can't talk, has an axe in his head or like a cleaver or some shit. And it's just the props, so everyone's like, oh, you asshole. And then uh, you see him with his throat slit and his throat's really slit. <laughs> and the uh, one of the stoner ladies is uh, like, oh, stop fucking around, Shelly. And he's not, and he dies. <laughs> Uh, the stoner chick that I just mentioned actually gets another cool kill where, with a fire poker right into the gut. Uh, like, it's just a lot of really cool kills. Uh, the only lame one, I would say, was the, uh, the male stoner, which that is, that's not their character names, but that is literally their characters. They're just, they like to smoke weed a lot. <laughs> that's their whole reason for being there. But, uh, he just gets shoved into an electrical box and electrocuted. That one's kind of lame. But, you know, it's, you know, whatever. You got to have one or two of those. <laughs> but, um, but an honorable, honorable, ugh. it's an honorable mention. But, uh, I thought, I think this kill, this is really where the 3D for me becomes offensive. <laughs> because I like my, I like my blood and I like my guts. So the, uh, the head crush kill. Now here's the thing. Like I said before. There are a lot of obligatory scenes that are just put in there strictly for the purpose of uh, just having 3D in there. That's all they're there for. And those are annoying and distracting, but, you know, whatever, I can take it. But uh, when you have Jason Voorhees crushing somebody's head to the point where their fucking eyeball pops out, that on paper, that's the kill of the film no fucking doubt about it that's it that is the kill of the film unfortunately it is hampered by a very stupid looking 3d effect where the eyeball just Ugh! and i i talked to a lot of people and they say that that's their kill of the film you know all love all respect everyone's entitled to their own opinion i just think having a much more realistic looking eye just kind of fall out i just think that would have been way way cooler uh, then an eyeball just darting out of somebody's head, because that's not how eyeballs work. <laughs> um, stri you know, it's just, it's hampered a lot by the 3D bullshit. But uh, it's a cool, it's a fun kill, it's whatever. It's It always gets a reaction out of people when I watch it with them, so whatever. It's just not my kill of the film. My kill of the film will be going to uh, the gentleman. <laughs> He's, uh, he goes into the, uh, go, oh! I almost fucking forgot. There is an homage to the Kevin Bacon kill, uh, where uh, the pregnant woman is just kind of chilling out. She just got done having sex with her boyfriend, 
and uh, post-coitus, got it in there. I'm going to do it for every single one of these reviews. It's my goal. <laughs> I'm really glad I remember that now. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, she's just chilling post-coitus, and um, uh, Jason comes up and just sticks a knife. I, I originally thought it was a machete all the times, but actually looking back at it now, it's a knife. <clears throat> that's where Chris gets the knife to stab him in the hand and so on and so forth. But yeah, so he stabs her right through the neck with a knife. Really cool kill. I almost kind of prefer it a little bit over the Kevin Bacon one. Uh, you know, it's it. It's a kind of a day-to-day -day thing. I mean, I don't think about those kills daily or anything like that. But every time I see both of them back-to-back, -back, I always kind of favor one over the other. Uh, but anyways, I really like that kill. But anyways, my kill of the film will be going to her boyfriend who uh, actually asks her for a... Um, <clears throat> asks her... Ask her bleh, I cannot speak. Good Lord. Uh, he asks her for a beer. Or asks if she wants a beer. And she goes, yeah. So he... he uh, actually, very impressively, he can just walk on a, in a handstand. So he's walking through the hallway in like a handstand. And uh, he just keeps walking. You actually see Jason just like up against the wall as as he like passes. It's kind of funny. And then uh, he eventually looks up or looks down, however you want to think about it. But he's in this handstand. He looks at Jason. Jason just lifts his machete. Boom! Split right down the middle. So fucking cool. You don't get like a in camera you know his body like splitting in half or anything like that uh, they just didn't have the i don't know if it was budget restraint or mpaa bullshit or anything like that but they just did not have that effect of him going like <clears throat> but uh which is fine because they make up for it and uh <laughs> probably the coolest gore effect in this film where like i said post coitus she is uh chilling in her i guess it's post shower but fuck it, post-coitus. <laughs> it's after they had sex. Fuck you. Anyways, uh, so she's chilling there. She starts to see. Uh, she starts to see blood dripping down from uh, from above, and she's like, "What?" <laughs> she like out loud. She's like, "Where's that coming from?" It's like above you. But anyways, uh, so she looks up, and you just see his like body, and it's like it's hard to describe, but it's like his legs are like split. And you just kind of get this, you get this just gross, like his, I think, I guess the only way I can describe it is his body is just split all the way from, uh, you know, twig and berries to his sternum. And it's just kind of filleted out. It looks fucking great and disgusting, but you know, my sick head, I would think that looks great, <laughs> but yeah. That is going to be my kill of the film, guys, and that will be it for Friday the 13th Part 3. Thank you all very much for stopping by. Uh, next week, we will be looking at a, another request that was requested by my good friend Emily, and she wants me to watch Your Next, which is uh, one of my favorite modern slashers, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you for watching as always. I very much so appreciate you, and take care of each other, and keep watching horror. All right, guys, have a good one.